back to Williamsburg and it's surreal to me. I used to live around here, South 2nd and Barry, back when I was a hopeless romantic who knew everything. I'm knowing less and less these days. There's no longer the rooster fights scored by brass band music blaring out of boom boxes. The neighborhood has evolved. It's changed. And so has Liv. My show is like a biography in seven minutes. I ask the questions that connect with my guests on a human level and create their portrait at the same time. I'm Patrick Hollett, and this is An Interview with Liv Tyler. Okay, I'm pouring my tea, and the bag's gonna fall, and it's gonna explode. Why do you like roller coasters so much? Oh my god. I don't know why, that's a <laughs> really said, good question. Oh I love roller coasters. I don't know, they just feel so, it feels so good to scream and to be scared and have no idea what's gonna happen. We don't share that one. <laughs> I don't like that stuff. Yeah. I went on a roller coaster with my my 11 year old Mila. We went to Dollywood, and there's a roller coaster that's so scary. And that was the only time ever I was next to him, as we were kind of going up and what being strapped in, and watching my son freaking out, mm -hmm. terrified as we were about to kind of get to the top. You were looking go, at him. Oh my God! And there was nothing I could do. I was strapped down. I couldn't get to him and help him and then suddenly there we were and it was like this huge drop <laughs> and then he was laughing and he loved it thank god yeah that's beautiful yes sir okay it's coming here it's flying in it's not sure flying it's not fast enough i'll be done by the time they fly beautiful you start out and you think that todd rundgren's your father and you learn that steven tyler's your father mm -hmm. tell me what that was like um i mean they're both just i f i felt very grateful to have father and all mm -hmm. and the support of both of them are very different men and but also you know very creative and magical and kind of amazing and when I was younger I was so obsessed with understanding the details of my story and what happened and I would interview everyone and ask some questions and everyone had a different version like if I talk about it with my mom she has one version Todd has one version my grandmother has another one like everyone has their Sure. interpretation and and I used to try and want to be able to figure it out and then I remember going you know what it's all those versions and it's all those things and it's I kind of put my own idea of it all together and just felt very grateful for mm -hmm. the way the way it all yeah you have so much strength around you beautiful you find me What's life like today? What's going on now? I just had a baby wow, girl. Wow, congratulations. She's three months. She's very sweet. It's so fun. That's and a big one. Yeah, I had another, I've had two babies in basically two and a half years. Well, I think I'd like another cup of coffee. A sip or two and then I better go. I ain't been sleeping well, but I've been dreaming Thinking of a place and time I loved it, but it was never mine The coffee is getting cold You've worked with some of the most amazing directors. Uh, Altman, Bertolucci. Mm -hmm. What did you, did you take anything from it? I mean, the, getting to work with them was just the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Um, and I miss Robert Altman so much. He gave me the best acting advice anyone's ever what? given me in my entire life. I was doing a scene and I went to look at the monitor and I was like, but tell me something, anything. Like, what do I need? And he patted me on the ass and pushed me a little bit back and he said, shut up and don't think so much. And I say that to myself <laughs> before every take. Look at me. Beautiful. I'm seeing. <laughs> She's so pretty. It's annoying. It's annoying. <laughs> what was uh, Bertolucci about like? He taught me something I always remember. He took me over to look at the monitor on one of the first days before we started filming. And he said, this is a painting, this frame, basically. Mm -hmm. And you are a piece of this whole painting. But you are not completely the painting. There's other things in this painting. Wow. And he kind of, you know, showed it to me in that way. Who do you go to for advice? 
Oh, wow. Um, I have a, a key group of women in my life. My grandmother, actually, my godmother, my mom. I have a couple of best girlfriends. I usually always know deep down inside what I want to do, but I kind of gather little bits of information from all the people I love and respect. Are you guys ready? Your mother was a model and a musician. What was it like growing up with such a strong female presence? What's amazing is my grandmother is an etiquette expert and teacher, and she has spent her whole life working in the government. And we actually wrote a book about manners together. And, wow. And then my mother has the foundation of that, but she really rebelled against a lot of that. And she did what she wanted to do. Um, and then I got to see sort of both sides of that learn from both of their mistakes and all the amazing lessons that they've taught me. And they're both very colorful creatures. <laughs> How has being a mother changed you? That's a really hard question. It changes you in every single way. I mean, it really changes your life in every way, but it just makes everything better. It makes everything harder, but everything better. It's like it's such an expansion of your heart. Everything changes when you have a child. And then suddenly I have three of them now, which is <laughs> crazy. It's what you've got. It's what you've got. I'm going to shoot the whole world. I'm going to bring you all of New York and the camera. Isn't it pretty, our city? I'm going to fly away if I turn the other way. The wind's going to get in my sails. I asked you what your favorite movie was. You I didn't did. ask me what my favorite movie was. What's is. your favorite movie? Um, I saw, I would say, when I saw Jules and Jim in the 400 Blows for the first time. I think we're in it right now. I blew, it blew my mind and I had to keep pressing rewind. There's a shot where, in Jules and Jim, where the girl puts a cigarette in her mouth and blows out like a choo-choo train. Uh-huh. And I had never seen anything like it, so I kept rewinding and rewinding and rewinding and I loved it. What's your relationship with fashion? <laughs> None. <laughs> no, but you have a, a very thing. awkward a... one. That's not true. You have I a wear a uniform specific... every day. Yeah. I have so many of the same thing. People think I'm dirty and don't change. No, but it's it's your it's your thing. What are you most proud of? My babies, my beautiful children, and the people they are. Is this what's gonna happen in the future? Everyone's just gonna live in their own little virtual reality? With the most scenic view in the world behind us, we will choose to live looking at our phones. I don't wanna do that. Me I, neither. I don't want these. Oh my God, it's so cool! Nothing too strenuous. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Liv and a personal favorite artist of mine, Bernardo Bertolucci, said it best. We're all in a giant painting, but we're only a small piece of the story telling itself around us all the time. We learn as we go, and if you're as lucky as I was today, you get to have fun with magical company like Liv Tyler as the narrative unfolds, as it evolves, as it changes.